Good morning. And as we come together on this fine day, we're mindful of the Lord's presence and what God calls us into. As you think about what has caught your attention over this past week, whether it's news on an international level or a local or a national, whatever has kind of caught you and captured you and stayed with you, one of the questions that's worth asking is, where is God in this? What is God doing? What is God asking of us, of me? And then to remember as we ponder that, that God is interested in our world, in every component, every aspect of it, and how we engage with it. So this is something we want to keep reminding ourselves of through the week, that God is here. God is at work in us and through us, and uh, we can trust the Lord even in times that uh, are challenging, even in situations and circumstances that might feel a little bit uh, perplexing. So when we come together on a Sunday to worship, we are uh, taking the time to focus our attention on this God who is part of our lives throughout the week. And um, because we can sometimes get distracted and forget those things, it's good to be reminded in times like this. So as we gather today, Let's take a breath, let's be here, let's focus our attention, our energy, our affections on the Lord, and let's pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you for the rich privilege of worship in a group like this. We're thankful for the time and for the energy for the facilities that permit this, and pray that as we worship today, Lord, it would be with a deepening understanding of who you are, what you're calling us to, what is possible because of your love and grace. And so we commit this time to you with our thankful hearts through Christ. Amen. Please stand for our call to worship. comes from Colossians chapter 1. Thanks be to God who has qualified us to share who rescued us from the dominion of darkness. Amen. Let's sing together.
please be seated. And as we come before this king, this one who is over all, this one who knows all, this one who is interested in all, we remember that this God, our Lord, is um, aware of our lives, how we've lived, the choices that we've made, and is wanting to help us to live in ways that honor him. For those times that we slip, we want to acknowledge those before the Lord and ask forgiveness. And so that's where we spend this time in confession, opening our hearts and minds before the Lord, asking forgiveness, and receiving the grace that God continues to pour out. So let us pray. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Amen. Thanks be to you, Lord, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. stars of night. I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it all Till their hearts 
The scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, which is an introduction to the Sermon on the Mount and may be found in the Bible in the pews on page 1377. Now, when Jesus saw that the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them the Beatitudes. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The word of God. And Lord, as we look into your word now, we pray that you would illumine it to our hearts by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for this wonderful gift. And as we listen to the words of our Lord, we pray that they would sink deeply into our hearts. Amen. Amen. So over these past several weeks through the summer, we've talked about the Holy Spirit, about the person and work of the Holy Spirit that led us to the Spirit's involvement with the scriptures and helping to produce them and preserve them. And then we looked at how Jesus used the scriptures uh, with illumination from the Spirit and also as a contributor to the scriptures as a teacher. Today, we are going to start another series of investigations, this time on a portion of the teaching of Jesus that is remembered by, by Matthew in what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Here, we are watching Jesus meeting with his disciples. A crowd has gathered around him, and according to what Matthew says, he draws his disciples, his followers, out from them, and they go a little ways up a hill where he will sit down and begin to teach. He wants to talk to them about the kingdom of heaven, a phrase that we hear in the passage that Lori read for us in verse 3, theirs is the kingdom of heaven, as well as in verse 10, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Beatitudes begin and end with a reference to the kingdom of heaven. That's a phrase that uh, does not originate here, however. We've heard it earlier when we were introduced by Matthew to John, the baptizer. We hear John preaching, and over in chapter 3 of Matthew's gospel, John comes saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Jesus, who is baptized by John, after Jesus comes out of the waters of baptism, he begins to move throughout the countryside, and he is also preaching, and according to what Matthew says, 
his message is this, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's a phrase, that's a reference that we're going to hear repeatedly in this and other gospels, this mention of the kingdom or the kingdom of heaven. We'll hear it inside the Sermon on the Mount, not just here in the Beatitudes, but a couple of times woven into the sermon, not also included in what we call the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. Jesus will, will tell some parables. He will say the kingdom of heaven is like dot, 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 different kinds of metaphors that he will use to describe, to open up on this kingdom of heaven. And then when he meets with his disciples for that dinner in the, uh, in the upper room, just before he is taken away by the soldiers, he will have a meal with them. He will share a cup and bread with them. And then he will finish that time together with this phrase, as Matthew records it, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. It's a word, it's an idea that's woven through the Gospels. It's very much a part of Jesus' teaching, and the apostles will pick it up as well. And so it's one that we want to listen to and pay attention to. Now, kingdom happens uh, to be a, a, on our minds this week in particular. Uh, those of us at least who have noted the passing of Elizabeth in England and the ascension to the throne of her son Charles. We think about kingdoms, and it's helpful to remember that, oh, that's right, there are still kingdoms in this world. Now, it can be challenging, too, because the way Jesus uses the word is going to be a little bit different from some of these other connotations. For Jesus, kingdom has to do more with actual real estate or territory. It's not, it's not the same as the Commonwealth of Great Britain, where you can identify actual pieces of dirt that belong to that kingdom. Jesus, when he speaks about the kingdom, is talking more about influence and allegiance. Influence by the king who is at work in and through all those who are in his kingdom. Allegiance, because this is expected of these people. Allegiance to this particular king. An allegiance that affects every aspect of their lives, how they think and speak and plan and act. Jesus has a lot to say about this kingdom. It's a phrase that works well to describe what he wants to get across to his disciples. He knows there is a coming day when this kingdom will be fully and finally realized. He's referring to that during that dinner with his friends in that upper room. I won't drink this again until I, we have this feast in the kingdom. But it's also the case that the kingdom is emerging right now. In fact, it's been a present reality for many years. When John the baptizer says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he's not saying four million years in the future. He is saying right now, the kingdom is among you right now because Jesus has come. So there's this present, future, this already not yet aspect to the kingdom. The kingdom is a realm over which God reigns and in which people embrace the values and aims and commitments of their king. It's not so much a matter of military or political power, but in this kingdom, love is paramount. In this kingdom, there is encouraged the care of the overlooked and the underserved. In this kingdom, life is prized and the mutual flourishing of one another is encouraged. This kingdom will be fully realized one day, and that day is still to come. But even now, it's making an impact. It is drawing people and making demands on them. This is what Jesus wants his disciples, his followers, these learners, he, what he wants them to understand. And so he'll teach often about this kingdom. He will get more specific about the, the values and aims and commitments, and we're going to see an example of that right here in the passage 
that Laurie read for us. So if you have a Bible, I'd encourage you to open that with, with me and follow along as we listen to what Jesus is saying there in Matthew 5 in these Beatitudes. We hear about the people who are in this kingdom, and Jesus is describing them as those who are poor in spirit. He's talking here about those who have an accurate assessment of themselves, who resist any sense of entitlement. They appreciate their own value. They also have a high view of those who are around them, not simply those who are like them. These people in the kingdom are those who mourn. They mourn because injustice is prevalent, because abuse happens, because they recognize how often in their own hearts and lives they drift, and that brings them to mourning. They are meek, Jesus says, and this word doesn't have to do with being weak, but rather it has more to do with being in control, in control of ourselves so that we, we don't push, we don't try to advance ourselves at the expense of another. We use our strength in service of others. They hunger and thirst after righteousness. They invest their energy in learning what the king wants. And as they discover that, they weave that into their own lives, into their thoughts, into their actions. It's important for them to know about the king, to know what the king is after, what the king is like, what the king wants, and to agree with that and to say, and how do I bring my life into alignment with that? They're merciful. They know that they've received mercy, and so they're kind, they're long-suffering, they're quick to forgive. They do that not because the forgiveness is deserved, very often it's not, but because they understand that they have been treated this way by the king, and they want to follow his example. And they are pure in heart. Their affections are not split. They serve a single master. They move away from what is not holy, and with God's help, they resist temptation. They lean towards what is good and beautiful and true. And this, just to step out for a moment, this is a challenge in these days to be pure in heart. When we think about all that's available, all that comes at us across the screens that we look at each day. We've heard these words before, we know that they're repeated frequently, and yet they are addressed to those who seek to be followers of God. And they are meant to be understood and incorporated, embraced, woven into our lives. These people are peacemakers, Jesus says. People who know the power of words, who look for words that build and heal, rather than words that undermine or divide. They resist bitterness in themselves. They don't get around it when they see it in others. They keep resentment at arm's length because they know this becomes toxic so quickly. In the situations they enter, they offer wisdom. They stand up. They pray. They seek what unites. They are advocates of what promotes harmony and then this sober ending to this list, they are often persecuted. They're persecuted because the values, aims, and commitments of the king are often different from and sometimes even seen as a threat to what is commonly accepted and practiced. Their allegiance to the king means that they will be pushed and pressed but Jesus calls for a devotion that remains, and that's what these people exhibit. A willingness to look forward to the day when all will be well, but between now and then, to move in as many days as God gives with confidence at peace. This is no easy task, but <clears throat> these people know they're not alone. 
They're able to join with others who believe in and live for the king. They cry out for help from the king often. The kingdom is at hand, Jesus says, and you can be part of it. This calls for a particular way of living, one that differs in many respects from what is commonly shown around us, sometimes even what feels natural. But it is a way that bears good fruit and one that will fully and finally carry the day in the days to come. And so to this way, to this kingdom, Jesus says, come. Let's pray. Lord, as we listen to familiar words, words that can roll off us because we've heard them before, would you help us to pause? And would you brighten the phrases that we need to hear. Those are likely to be different for each of us, but would you help us to notice what you have here? Would you put a finger on something that we can work on, something that can be true for us or something that we want to be more in evidence? And would you help us to remember what's involved with being part of your kingdom Would you help us to keep true in our devotion, in our allegiance to you? Would you remind us that this is a good way of life? Amen. going to be moving through these three chapters over the next several weeks, so if you want to be reading them at home, that would be great, and uh, as you come on Sundays, the words will sound all the more familiar as you do that. And now we'll take a few moments to spend in prayer, which we'll end with, uh, we'll end by saying together the Lord's Prayer, and it has that phrase, thy kingdom come, which again, we've said so many times. But as we do that today, let's be mindful of Jesus speaking about this kingdom and what it means to pray that the kingdom would come. It's not simply saying in the future, wouldn't that be great? But may it be true that the kingdom of God is evident around us right now. And to the extent that I contribute to that, may my life take on that shape. That's at least part of what Jesus is encouraging of his disciples as he teaches them to pray in this regard. There are other things that we can bring before the Lord as well. You'll have seen the list or some of us are on a, an email thread through the week that reminds us of people and situations connected with this church. We can be bringing those before the Lord. There are other things we're aware of because of where we travel and who we're connected with. This time of prayer is one that we can all join in together. And so I encourage you to uh, accompany me as we pray now. Thankful, God, that you hear us. Thankful that you call us into your presence. Grateful that you are a good and strong and loving God. And so we pray. We pray for the governments of our world in times of turmoil and confusion, that more and more people responsible for leading would look to you. That those who know and love you that are in positions of responsibility and authority would allow their connections with you to influence what they say and the counsel they offer. We pray for your church 
And Lord, in a day when it seems like so much in the church is diminishing, and the church is different from what we remember or what we want, that we might be renewed in our realization that the church is yours, that you have established it, and you won't let the church fail. Would you help us with the part of the church with which we're connected, that we'd be faithful in carrying out what you call us to do. We think of others around us in our neighborhood, in this state, in this nation, and then further afield. Lord, so many local expressions of your church. And where there's pressure, would you bring strength? And where there's ease, would you help your people to be faithful in their commitments? And where there's opportunity, would you help them to be courageous and engaged? We pray for this church. Lord, for your wisdom and guidance you'd help us as we try to care for one another and be attentive to our community. And we pray for the people we know, the people who are dear to us, those who have experienced loss, those who are dealing with crises of various intensities, those who are trying to manage health issues and financial concerns, those who are laboring with relationships. Would you help us to remember that you are available and even as we lift these people up, Lord, please show us how we can be of help. We pray for ourselves that we would hear Jesus speaking to us and that we would take his words personally, that we would be open and attentive, hospitable to your spirit and what you want to do in and through us. We thank you that we can come and we do that now in the name of our Lord who taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. That great line in the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, is a good reminder that the part of bringing on the kingdom is the doing of God's will. That we bring the kingdom in, we show that the kingdom has value and merit and is worthy of attention by doing what the king asks. And so that prayer really is a, a personal prayer, something that we are asking for ourselves, praying that God would give us the strength to make this so. We also have opportunity as we gather to bring our offerings, and if you're prepared with an offering today, you can use the trays in the front of the room or at the back door. We also uh, have an online portal for donations, and uh, gifts can be mailed to the church office. But as we prepare these gifts, let's remember again that God is the one who provides and makes it possible for us to give, 
and that God is the one who gives wisdom too for how we use these resources. So Lord, we thank you for the rich privilege of being able to give. We thank you for how you bless us and pray that with these gifts, others might be blessed as well. We commit them to you now in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. As you know, my name is Ryan. I serve here as a deacon at St. Thomas. Uh, here's a few week uh, announcements and notes about this week's activities. Uh, first of all, thanks is in order. Uh, thank you for everyone that helped out at Salem UCC, the uh, clothes closet this week. Uh, it was very much appreciated. Um, first of all, there's an elders uh, meet, uh, meet this week. Uh, please be praying that the Lord gives them wisdom and guidance as they consider life and the health of St. Thomas. Uh, on Tuesday morning, there will be a coffee, uh, morning coffee at 10 a.m. in Fellowship Hall. Um, Alan Gallagher will also be providing information on, on the presentation on Blue Zones, areas, where, uh, where areas in the world where remarkably healthy people live. On Wednesday, there is a Bible study, a uh, midweek Bible study on Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. online. And then if you're interested next week, uh, on Saturday, uh, there's a Brennan's breakfast. There will be, be a sign up on the hallway bulletin board uh, by the, the uh, library to help with planning for that. So please sign up if you're interested in helping plan. Um, also, next Sunday, the 18th, uh, Dulcimers will be performing at uh, Fort Hunter from 12 to 2. So please go support the Dulcimers at Fort Hunter next, Saturday, uh, next Sunday. Um, I think there's a special announcement from John.
study the sound on October 27th. The deadline is two weeks from now. We have about 20 people going, uh, but uh, uh, we need to finalize it, so it would be helpful if you let me know sooner rather than later. The deadline is Sunday, two weeks from now, the 25th of September, but sooner notice would be better so we can do the logistics. I will be getting a, a communication out this week to those that have already um, expressed an interest in attending, so look for that. Thank you. So I'll just add a note to the uh, Salem situation. I was talking with the pastor of Salem UCC, and um, she was saying that she spoke with the person who was kind of coordinating the clothes closet there, and how much she was just raving about the people who came from St. Thomas and the help that was provided, that it really went great, and she was so thankful for that. So uh, they do this every week, or excuse me, every month at Salem, and if uh, one or two of us are interested in helping out there, they would be very grateful for the assistance as folks come in. And a lot of people in downtown Harrisburg use what's available at the clothes closet. So it's, uh, it's really a good ministry for um, folks who are nearby and uh, a way for us to partner with another local church. Um, we do a friendship cafe also down the hall as you're walking by the, down the hallway, there's sign-up sheets there to take a look at and then you can make a left turn and go into the fellowship hall for some uh, coffee and snacks. And when you're there, you'll see on the raised table over on the left, uh, not only an opportunity for grocery carts, but also if you would like to sign uh, some papers that will go into cards that we send to Tim Dawson and to Ella Ferguson. We should send her a card because she's just started college, so we should say, hi, Ella, how are you doing? Um, there's some ways for you to do that on the table down there. I think that's it, but that was a lot of announcements this morning. Would you please stand for our benediction? So when Paul is writing to Timothy, a friend of his and a protege of his, someone who he's been training and encouraging as a, a, not only just a, as a follower of the Lord, also a minister of the gospel, he will describe something of his own experience in walking with the Lord. And part of the way he'll do this is using king and kingdom language. We might think that when we talk about a king who has the resources our God does, that it would be sort of in terms of how that's good for us. And we might get sort of stuck in that space to say, this is great. What, you know, how could it be any better? And it certainly, certainly there are blessings and benefits in being associated with the king. But I love the way that Paul puts this. He, when he stands before the king, he recognizes who he is, who he was, what he had done, and to realize that even still, the king welcomed him with open arms. And so he's not thinking so much in terms of all the blessings that accrue to him, although he knows about that. He's thinking of the rich privilege of being embraced by the king, and he wants to make sure that he, as, as well as Timothy and all those around him, bear in mind who this king is. And so in one of these uh, statements to his friend, he'll talk about the Lord in this way. He'll speak of his own experience, and then he'll sum it up. Now, to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And that's what Paul wants to say to Timothy and to all who hear what is being written to Timothy. As we come before the king, let's remember who the king is. Eternal, immortal, immortal, invisible, the only God. To this king, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.